So Lil Uzi Vert dropped Red and White EP. Now the first week sales came out, the official numbers, because it is Friday. For some reason, Billboard <coughs> calculates Friday to Friday. Not sure why. Friday isn't even like the first day of the week. That would be Sunday or like Monday if we're talking like working week. But official net numbers came out and they stated that Uzi sold 20K first week. Now, there's a lot to unpack here. There's a lot of people in the chat are saying Uzi flopped or whatever. Um, and then a lot of Uzi fans are kind of defending him to the max like they're falling on their sword right here i don't necessarily think it's good or bad like it's uh, and, and the more the people defend it the more it looks like oh damn y'all are y'all are trying to compensate for something like he didn't fall off because because obviously with 20k yeet sold 34k that's just a new artist um i'm not necessarily saying yeet is bigger because he's definitely not but given that he's a new artist and he's sold more than uzi technically speaking you know people are going to come out of everywhere saying uzi fell off or uzi mid so i think these fans justifiably are coming out saying like no it was a soundcloud tape and i think they do have some merit in their, those arguments so y'all are saying l me that's what i'm saying like you haven't even heard my argument i'm just trying to set the context now i don't think it's a w though either so Uzi dropped the tape, red and white. I think he started like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I can't remember what the day was. Maybe it was Tuesday with the first single, but he only dropped it on SoundCloud, right? And then he dropped the next single. He already released like four or five of the songs prior to the EP re officially releasing on all streaming platforms. Now, something to keep in mind is, and, and I've seen a lot of false statements people are saying soundcloud doesn't count for album sales when it does now how album sales are calculated are for subscription streaming services such as spotify apple music purely because apple music you can't listen to unless you have a subscription is 1250 streams to equate to one album now the number 1500 has been calculated based on Spotify as an average because a lot of or, or some of I don't know what the number of people that listen to Spotify is like that that have subscriptions I personally have a subscription because I don't like listening to ads although you know YouTube music like I don't know why I'm doing it but anyway it's either 1250 if you have the subscription for Spotify but if you're just listening to the ad supported platform where you don't pay anything on Spotify and this goes for YouTube, this also goes for SoundCloud. It's like 3750, 3750 streams. So it's 2.5x the amount of streams than the subscription based platforms that you have to get on SoundCloud and not the others. Now, I do think that Uzi kind of fucked up his or, or, or it's not even like fucked up. It was just like he didn't care about the sales. So I do think that given this type of rollout, it was bound to get something low, such as like 20K. I, I predicted like 40 or 50K because it's Uzi. He's just that big of an artist. But if you think about it, if you only release it on one platform for a given period, uh, it, it's bound to not like you're not going to get on radio, which is actually huge. Like a lot of artists who get on radio that that's like half of their sales or whatever it is. Like it's you can pay for your own albums on radio. You just hit up the radio stations like, yo, play this this many times. And then it just, it just counts. Right. So here's another false statement that people were saying is that since the EP for a couple days only had like five songs on it five of the songs did not count when that's just not true all of the songs if you go on spotify are on the same album it doesn't matter like they all have the same cover art it all is based upon their isrc code which is essentially like the id number for the project that they're on and like the, the he has a major label they're not gonna not have that all situated and so again soundcloud counts and all of the songs count now let's get into the sales, if it's a W or not. I think that he doesn't care about the sales, so that's why it was low. But at the same time, this wasn't really a project that he was trying to promote to the mainstream. 
right? Like he, this was really just for the OG fans. I can't imagine they put a marketing budget behind this. Plus it was an EP technically. So EPs and mix tapes don't get the same amount of <laughs> marketing budget behind them as albums. Plus they have less songs and albums with say 20 songs or so. They put that many songs on there because it increases the amount of stream. So a 20 song album is likely gonna get somewhere around 2X the amount of total stream. So it's gonna be easier to hit that 1500 mark for each album um, for like streams to album sale. But again, since he released it so weird, it probably wasn't even on like weird ass platforms like Deezer and whatever. 20K is still low though. I don't know, man. What do y'all think? My last album sold 2K Stop Talking. My last album probably didn't even sell one album. So I'm not even hating at all. But yeah, he didn't fall off. People are going to use that argument no matter what. You could have a million followers and get like a hundred million streams. People are going to still troll like all the people with no lives. Um, Regardless, though. He gave the, the fans what they want. Pink Tape, I'm sure he's going to make sure that he sells like over 200K because his label is just going to be like, yo, we need this shit to hit or else. Because because Lewis, Lewis, he, he runs my page for him on my Instagram. He was like, perception is everything. And I agree completely. So I don't even know if it was necessarily a good move because now the Uzi haters have ammo to say he fell off. And he, you're right though, he did have major playlisting. Like he had four fun. We can go to that right now. I wasn't sure if that was like a switch up or whatever, cause they put Space Cadet on Rap Caviar first, I believe. And I told y'all four fun is easily the best song on the tape. We can check the streams on it, but it's number three on Rap Caviar. So that shit is getting hella streams right now. Four fun. Shit went crazy. So. Why is this not liked? I think it's because it's the single version or the album version. I'm not sure, but it's even above Drake and 21 Savage Quavo. But also here are the people that charted above him. I believe the album was number 23 on Billboard 200. They gave a list. Here it is. So San Benito, don't know who that is. Morgan Wallen, don't know who that is. Harry Styles, Jesus Christ. Future number four, solid. Drake 33k solid Drake even with his fucking dance album is still charting like shit the weekend uh Lizzo she probably got to take number nine and ten because she, she packing Dirk Mac Miller but Lil Uzi with a SoundCloud tape I still think it's it's a W I mean if you're dropping a SoundCloud tape that didn't really have much money behind it, although I don't even know how much money Uzi really put behind Eternal to take. Cardi and Uzi, we always talk about them, but the, the reason we do is because they're like goats in the sector of marketing with Eternal to take and Whole Lot of Red. Those were huge albums just off leaks and snippets. Yes, Uzi did film like crazy promotional videos, but it was all for content, not necessarily posting on pages like a lot of these rappers do. When they drop albums, they like, you know, hit up rap, no jumper, academics, double XL, world star, all of the pages and pay for it. And that racks up to a thousand dollars or thousands of dollars. Uzi and Cardi don't have to do that. Even Drake don't have to do that. Young boy don't have to do that. It's not just Uzi and Cardi, but those are just like my favorite artists out of those category rappers. So I don't know, in comparison to say Eternal Attack or this, this was also a surprise release. I bet you a lot of people don't even know that Uzi dropped because it was just so out of nowhere. I mean, I believe we didn't really know until a couple days prior to Uzi releasing the album we're in uh, on thin ice or whatever leak culture or leak news page. They just came out and said, yo, Uzi's dropping on July 22nd. He did end up dropping on that day, but he started dropping before that too. So a lot of the streams were lost on SoundCloud firstly, because, and it was in the week prior to the official release. So all of the millions of plays on the first four or five songs did not count towards the first week sales of the figure that we just got and to this Billboard 200 cut, which I think it's actually, I don't know. That's a discussion for another day. And then we're gonna have so much fun people like this. Uzi fell off. 
Taiko saying it had good promo. It had good promo just because it's Uzi though. I bet you he didn't say shit. I mean, SoundCloud was posting it because they use Uzi as promo. They ain't promoting Uzi. They're using, they're trying to latch onto Uzi and be like, yo, we're still that platform, bruh. Uzi's still using us. But nah, I came back. I've told y'all again, this is why I'm not reacting to music on stream anymore because people are just so polarizing and it gets in my head and I'm like, yo, y'all are dick riding or y'all are hating. Like there's no in between. It's hard for me to gauge an opinion. So, um, yeah, but once I listen to Uzi's project by myself, like I think it's like an eight. The only song that I'm still iffy on is believe me, but maybe when I'm in a certain mood, it'll, it'll hit, you know, how long am I going to make excuses for Uzi? But see, that's what I'm saying. I'm not making excuses. I said low key. It's like a, it's, I don't think it's a W. I do not think it's a W. I don't think it's a L either though. Like this isn't good or bad, but I'm just trying to play both sides here. And I was giving sides as to how it was similar to like an album drop and it just sold less and it was on playlists. So it should have streamed a lot. I mean, let's check how many streams <laughs> for fun had by um on red and white and by the way i have this theory on red and white as to what it is obviously red and white creates pink but also um red could mean and this takes us all the way back to the eternal attack days right all the theories red or white could be the old songs and then the white could be the new song so it's like two sides there's no like in between here this is all new music or old old music like 2017 type shit <laughs> but let's see for fun 2.4 mil space cadet dropped first it was on streaming platforms first so it makes sense that has three mil also this was on rap caviar first and i don't know if it's on there anymore and this was higher up on the playlist so 2.4 mil three mil Hitting my shoulder looks like it's the least favorite song out of them god damn but yeah hopefully that clears things up there's been a lot of false statements going on and i just wanted to make sure that whenever argument you get in with people saying uzi fell off or you're on the side of uzi did fall off now you can use some facts although just be ready when they say the other shit to them you know and uzi not in his prime anymore i mean so i mean what does prime mean anymore it's so hard to even because the internet's so polarizing now. That's what, like the politics, like Trump, whatever, Obama, like pe people just are either love them or hate them. So right now there's this divide, but it's among every single fan base. I bet you soon there's going to be, and it probably is already happening with say Yeet and he just blew up, right? They're going to say, yeet went mainstream like i hate his music now and then there's gonna be og or not even og like new fans be like yo this yeet guy like i just found out who he was he's fire so it's hard to gauge when you're actually in your prime plus it was easier to finesse the system back in the day i know that the billboard did their whole thing uh you know they did the change before uzi dropped eternal take or maybe they didn't i don't know but he didn't really sell any actual physical copies he sold like 10k or something so it didn't really affect it anyway and also there was just so much build up for that album whereas now it uzi can't really build that up anymore like it's impossible on the internet to do i don't even know if cardi could do that with a whole lot of red shit so at this point like i don't even necessarily care per se about the first week sales it's interesting to analyze to see like how hot someone is pause like people say Cardi was in prime three, four years ago. Yeah, and it's so subjective. Like what does prime mean? Because technically speaking, Eternal Attack, which is his last solo album. So Uzi is in his prime. He hasn't dropped an official project or studio album since. So he's still technically in his prime. But sound wise, one, one person might like the Eternal Attack sound. Another person might like the 2016, 2017 sound. So you might have a difference in opinion on what the prime is. And Uzi is not going broke, I assure you. I think there was a stat where like Uzi is <clears throat> one of the main rappers who, ha who has the most streams on Spotify right now in 2022. So he's getting like billions, bro. He, he don't need to worry about shit. 
like when you're a star and you have like a big ass song unless you like sold your masters and remember uzi renegotiated the contract with the help of jay-z and rock nation that now you just make money for the rest of your life passively and uzi's an icon he's a goat i'm gonna be listening to uzi until i'm 70 years old until i i'll probably die before then you know i gotta I, you know some somebody's gonna catch me cardi's still selling more than uzi that's not true we'll see though i'm not against cardi passing him in sales i still think uzi's technically bigger he is a much like like this album that he just dropped was much more like mainstream appeal it was on rap caviar as a soundcloud tape i don't think whole lot of red ever got on there like on the actual playlist because rap caviar does co-sign people but they don't necessarily always put them on the playlist like that's that's like you gotta have connections for that shit i'm pretty sure just to you know you gotta submit to be on there and it's gotta fit like a certain demographic that i don't know cardi's got his like own little cult that does not relate to say who's on rap caviar right now i was listening to it earlier because i was listening to for fun and then it just like shuffled it was rod wave on them like what the fuck is this bro migos is on the cover of rap caviar i feel like that's the type of it's like the pure atlanta hip-hop style or like lil dark money bag yo future like like og hip-hop type shit lil baby like the what's the word uh not it's not mainstream it is mainstream but the traditional type hip-hop that when you think of it like on the radio that is what rap caviar is there's like internet people and other playlists that cardi or these like even summers and them are on pink tape selling at most 75k jesus christ and he deleted his comment <laughs> that's crazy that's crazy